Good morning, YouTube. Today, we're gonna to talk about tips and myths about single clutch transmissions. So are you recording all of the nefarious activities? If you're new to the channel, my name is Dan, this is my garage, and this is our new Lamborghini Gallardo Superleggera that we just picked up. And I just did a review on it, and I found that there was a lot of comments in the reviews that were, well, it was all over the board. People made up a bunch of crap, and there was a bunch of pervasive myths that were repeated in the comments about these single clutch transmissions. Some of these things are accurate and some of them are just total crap. And so I wanna discuss some of these things. And also I wanna discuss how you can get more life out of the clutch on these e-gears because that is kind of the more relevant question. People always get scared of these things. They say, oh my God, the clutch doesn't last long. So let's talk about facts not bullshit and let's also kind of accept that look there's a lot of variance because well a lot of things happen when you have this many cars out there with these sorts of transmissions so we'll get into that and take it out for a drive and discuss all those things but real quick if you want to support us please like share and subscribe hit the notification bell those things do help us out it helps grow this channel and we do appreciate that greatly furthermore if you have any parts or services that you need for your car Check out our website, normalguyssupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services. You can hire us to help you out. And you can use the code NGS10. It hooks you up with 10% off almost everything in the store. And finally, this car is for sale. And actually, we're going to be selling more cars. So if you didn't know, we are spinning up a dealership. I am Crazy Hubbard Whitfield. Come on down to Crazy Hubbard's used car lot. We've got prices slashing down from 2004s to 1989 models. So we have the dealership name, we have the website. I don't want to tell you just yet because, well, it's not done yet. We're not ready. So far, this is the only car for sale on it, but pretty soon we're gonna have more cars, so just stay tuned for all that. All right, guys, let's talk about these single clutch transmissions and how you can improve the life expectancy of it and what are some myths about these things. So the first thing we need to do is just discuss what is a single clutch transmission and how do they work. So we're gonna be talking about the E-Gear in the Lamborghinis, the F1 transmission, the Ferraris, the Maserati has this, I forget what they call it, and so does Fiat and a few other companies. Basically, what we're talking about are single clutch transmissions that are operated by hydraulic actuators. A hydraulic actuator consists of a cylinder or fluid motor that uses hydraulic power to facilitate mechanical operation. So what they've done is they take a a normal standard transmission, a manual transmission, and instead of having a shifter and a clutch pedal, you basically have a computer that hydraulically operates a bunch of actuators through a pump that pressurizes hydraulic lines, and those will actually move the transmission shift linkages and operate the clutch. They'll open and close the clutch so it engages and disengages. So the computer is effectively managing all of that for you. So that's kind of how these things work, and we'll show you in just a little bit. We're gonna go take a look. I actually have a brand new clutch and throw up bearing. We'll be talking about those during this video, and I'll show you them once we get to where we're going at the Howard. How does this work then? So the first thing you gotta realize is that there is a hydraulic pump that pumps some sort of hydraulic fluid, usually like a ATF type of fluid or Pentosin. It also has an accumulator, which is basically, it looks like a bulb, and that bulb is pressurized and that helps retain pressure and keep the pressurization in the system. So people start complaining, oh, these things have lots of problems. Well, that's because usually they get a leak or something like that, and then you get problems. So the first thing to note is when you open the door on these cars, you'll hear the F1 pump or the E-gear pump turn on. It's back here. Oh, well, this one's already pressurized. <laughs> Eh, nah, just kidding, thems was jokes. <laughs> I was fooling y'all, man. I was fooling y'all. Those was jokes. So yeah, it won't do it unless it actually needs to, but this one's already primed. So when we turn the keys to the ignition, you'll hear it turn on again. And it's usually a good tip to let it fully pressurize before turning on the cars. Let's do that. Let's hop in this car and we'll start talking about some more. All right, so we're in the Superleggera. We're gonna power it on. And before I start it, I'm gonna just let it sit for a second and you should hopefully be able to hear the pump running. So put the keys in. All right, ready? Hear that? So you can hear the secondary air and then the pump just stopped. So if I just put it in neutral, actually, you'll be able to hear the pump and stuff kick on. So I'm gonna put my foot on the brake. Listen, I'll put it in neutral. That's the pump, that's the hydraulic pump. So every time I shift a gear, oh. You can see it needs to run and keep pressure. So that basically, that pressure is used to actuate the clutch hydraulic actuators and the shifting actuators. So basically you've got a hydraulic ram that shifts things back and forth and engages and disengages the clutch. All right, so now that we kind of demonstrated that, let's power it on. 
if you listen carefully, especially if you're the passenger because it's on the right-hand side of the car, when you're driving down the road, you can actually hear it occasionally uh, just kicking on and off the pump. There's a few things to note about the lifespan of these clutches. There's a huge disparity on the internet about how long they last. The problem is there's a few outliers that ruin all the data. So you're gonna hear every once in a while about one of these clutches only lasting like 10,000 miles or something crazy. That happens once in a while. Someone does that really dumb or they don't calibrate the system correctly and it burns it out really fast. That is not typical. These generally last about 40,000 miles and that's true of both the E-Gear and of the Ferrari F1 system. Now, the later models tend to last a little bit longer because they got a little bit better. So obviously a 355 F1 isn't probably gonna last as long as a 430 F1. And obviously the 360 would be somewhere in the middle. But generally speaking, you can get about 40,000 miles plus or minus maybe 10,000 miles. And it's really a big variant on how you drive and how it was calibrated. So if you've had it replaced, they did not calibrate it correctly, it will burn these things out really, really fast. So when you do these clutch jobs, you wanna make sure that the right person does them. All right, so one of the first tips about these things is don't drive them for long distances or up hills in reverse. And the reason is because it's all about getting the clutch to engage fully. So when you drive it, you have to imagine the gas pedal is all you've got for control to tell the computer how to work. So when you push on the gas pedal, the computer has to simultaneously say, I'm gonna give the engine gas and start to release the clutch. As if you, you know, it's kind of like the computer's managing the clutch pedal, you start giving it gas and it starts going, okay, I'm gonna start releasing the clutch pedal, but it never really engages fully when you're in reverse. So it's kind of feathering the clutch and riding it. That's why you don't wanna go real long distances in reverse. All right, so we've got it in reverse. And you'll see when I give it gas, it'll all of a sudden kind of lurch because the clutch is sort of engaging. So here we go. Ready, I'm feathering it. Whoop, it didn't like that. Put it in reverse again. All right, it took too long, ready? There you go, it kind of lurches a little bit, but you can see it immediately disengages. So as soon as I let go of the gas pedal, you can hear the engine rev. See, hear that? It's because it's actually disengaging the clutch. So it, it engages it disengages and so it's always feathering always kind of riding the clutch that's why you don't want to do reverse and long long distances here's why you get some of that herky jerky stuff in these e-gear and f1 systems <laughs> you like that yeah that was fun if you imagine again you start to give it gas and it has to give it open the throttle body, body flies at the same time it starts managing the clutch and so what happens is that if the clutch engagement point isn't set correctly, it can engage too soon or too late, causing the engine to rev a little bit too much or not rev enough. In my case, this clutch is pretty old. It's at 22% life left, probably a little bit less than that now. Maybe it's down to 20%. So what's happening is it's engaging the clutch a little bit too slowly. And so the engine kind of drops RPM real quick. So if you listen very carefully, I'll tell you, Right as I touch the gas pedal, hold on, I'm on the brake, I'm on the brake. Okay, gas pedal, soft, here it goes down in RPM and then it goes up. So it's not quite calibrated correctly. Like if I was gonna be keeping this clutch for a long time, I would take it to someone and have it get recalibrated because it's gonna get really, really annoying. Here's an interesting myth and sparks a ton of debate is people say, oh, I'm at a stop, put it in neutral. You don't have to do that. Everyone says, oh, it makes the clutch last longer. It, no, it doesn't make the clutch last any longer because right now the clutch is completely disengaged from the flywheel. So unless it's programmed wrong, it shouldn't be having any friction, any wear on the clutch right now. What it is doing is it's using the throw-up bearing. So having it sit in gear at the light will put some more wear on your throw-up bearing. But the reality is when you change the clutch on these, you should be changing the throw-up bearing too. So it's kind of irrelevant and I personally believe there's, it's a waste of time, and it's a waste of energy. Long story short, if it makes you happy, it's not any, there's no harm in doing it. If you're not doing it, don't worry about it. It's not gonna dramatically affect anything substantially and it's not gonna hurt your pocketbook, so who cares? Now there is one tip that can legitimately help the clutch last a lot longer and that is to drive your car 
in sport mode or in race mode. Now the reason for that is because generally speaking, that means it will engage the clutch faster. So that is one of the goals is we don't want the computer to slip the clutch to feather it. We want the computer to engage it fully as quickly as possible. The faster it becomes fully engaged, the less wear you're gonna experience on the clutch. So sport mode, race mode, whatever they call it in your car, that generally helps the clutch last longer. The downside is, of course, in some, in some of the cars, for example, the Ferraris, you have the Manatino switch, put it in sport mode, also changes the suspension or put it in race mode. Sport or race mode, basically the highest aggressive mode for the transmission, makes it last longer in the transmission, but it can change the suspension settings, so it might make your ride more uncomfortable. Now, this is not something that you have to worry about if you have a modern dual clutch car. It does not matter. Those clutches are a completely different design. Most of them are wet clutches. They last a long, long time. So if you're driving a 458, California 488, F8, Huracan, any of those cars, don't worry about it. Just drive it to your own comfort. You don't really have to worry about any of this stuff. This is only relevant to the single clutch cars. Gallardo, 355, 360, 430, even the Aventador, believe it or not, is a single clutch. Murcielago, all that stuff, all those cars are single clutch. So you can feel it shifts a lot more aggressively now, now that we have it in sport mode. And we got the giant diesel truck that's like, I'm in a big truck, I'm gonna go faster than you. Cool, bro. So now that we know that they basically last about 40,000 miles, what is it that causes these things to sometimes be dramatically less? Well, I have a few theories on that. One is, again, I think someone screws up and does not program the computers correctly and what happens is they have it slipping way too much or something like that and it burns out the clutch. There is a possibility of another form of human error which is people just driving them terribly like letting it slide while it goes up a hill, like drive it and reverse up a big hill. Those things can put a lot of wear on them so that is a legitimate concern. But here's what I think happens more often. Dealerships know that people are scared of these clutches and they try and convince people to change them out too early. That's what I think happens. A lot of these people will hear numbers like 22% and they'll freak out, oh my God, oh, it's only got 22% left, I need to change the clutch. No, that's like almost 10,000 miles. If you're only driving the car a couple thousand miles a year, that could be four or five years. You know why they want you to change it? Because they wanna make money on you. So, the, ah. I just think it's a money grab. It is some, it's a culture that they've created about these cars that's unnecessary. Be suspicious when the dealership says, oh, you need to change it, it's only at X percentage. If it's, honestly, I would drive these things down to like 5%. It's not gonna harm them. You know, if it gets down to zero, yes, it can be bad because then, well, it could start damaging the flywheel and some other components, but you're gonna notice that. Like if it starts getting down really low, it will start slipping, it will start having other issues and you will notice it. So I just drive them until you feel that. If, as soon as you do feel it slipping though, be ready to stop driving and just be like, okay, we're done. It can't go anywhere because it needs to, it needs to clutch. So another thing that happens on these cars that gets a bad rap is hydraulic leakage. Yeah, I know. It's a problem as you get older. Fecal incontinence is the involuntary passage of stool or gas when sometimes a patient is unaware or even if they have the urge to go, they're unable to control it. So what happens is you've got all these hydraulic lines, you've got a hydraulic pump pressurizing the system. It's very high pressure. These are not like, you know, 100 PSI. It's like a couple thousand PSI, right? It's very high pressure. So any sort of leak will help it depressurize very rapidly and cause the system to work harder last less and shift poor. So hydraulic leaks are a big concern. If you see any sort of ATF or hydraulic fluid coming out of the back of these cars, it's most likely from the F1 system, from the E-gear system, and it is bad. You need to take care of that immediately. If it's depressurizing all the time, it's cycling the pump to pressurize it a ton. And that pump's working really, really hard. Now that pump's not gonna last nearly as long, it's gonna start to have issues, and that's where you start having, oh man, my. Uh, my F1 pump went out, I gotta spend all this money, oh, all this other problems, right? So take care of the leaks immediately. It, do not let them persist. Another problem that can happen is the accumulator starts to go bad. If the accumulator does, goes bad, 
then it won't retain pressure. So it can't retain pressure, so there it's gonna be, again, working harder and causing other sorts of problems. So that's where those things seem to have some sort of problems, especially like as they age, they're made out, you know, it has rubber lines and rubber seals, those things start to go, and you end up with these people who haven't driven their car in six months, they come out to the car, they start up, and also there's a giant puddle of ATF under the ground, on the ground. Well, one of the seals gave out, and it puked out all of its ATF fluid. Assume that, you know, hey, it's, it's another maintenance point, another thing to check on these cars. And on some of these cars, it's not easily accessible. You do have to remove some panels to get to those sorts of things. So just accept that that's how these things are. People have also said, don't downshift. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I think if you want to drive it downshifting, downshift, it's not going to harm it. Basically, the way my mentality is for these things is I hope and expect to get about 40,000 miles on it. After that, I assume I'm going to have to replace the clutch, and it's not going to be cheap. So to give you an idea, we just bought a clutch and a throw-up buried for this car, and it cost me over $4,000. Now, I'm going, to do the, I'm going to do the labor myself. But that's $4,000 in parts, and that's not including the fluids and other things that I'm going to need for this car. So overall, I'm expecting to spend somewhere between four dollars and $5,000 to do the work myself. Now, if you're taking it to a, you know, a dealership or some other independent person or whatever, think about that. Four thousand dollars just in parts plus a decent amount of labor, you're looking at anywhere from a six to ten thousand dollar clutch job on these cars. So that's where the concern comes in, and that's why people get so scared of them, and why it's a big deal. So there's one more thing I forgot to mention, which is a lot of people say, oh, when you shift gears, ease off the throttle. Well, that's not true of the later. F1 and E gears. So the early stuff, it might help a little bit. I know on the 355, maybe it makes a difference. On the 360, 430, on this, does not make any difference. In fact, it actually kind of confuses the computer because it's actually electronically controlling the throttle bodies. So when you start changing the throttle position, it's actually kind of trying to match what you're trying to do and it causes it to shift a little bit wonky. So don't worry about doing that in any of these cars. Same with the downshifts, don't have to ease off or do anything. Just upshift downshift as you would normally don't worry about that so this is the clutch that we're gonna be putting in this is the brand new e-gear clutch and you can see it is actually a very heavy piece and right here is the throwout bearing so the two of these combined are about four thousand dollars i believe the clutch was just under three thousand dollars and this was right about a thousand dollars so they are not cheap so that is, of course, why everyone wants to try and save these clutches as long as they can. So to kind of give you like the 30 second summary, you want to try and get the clutch to engage as quickly as possible. Don't let it ride the clutch as much as you can. Don't worry about shifting. Just drive like you would. Don't worry about putting in neutral. You don't have to do that. It's, you can if it makes you feel better great. It's basically producing no measurable difference on the duration of these clutches, maybe couple hundred miles or something and same thing with the throwout bearing you're going to be replacing them both at the same time anytime you replace the clutch you should replace the throwout bearing so just always do them in pairs but that's kind of about it they're really actually a quite good system when maintained properly and when driven properly so i don't know why people like to crap on them so much it just takes a little bit of getting used to you know you got to really learn how to work that gas pedal to get it to engage properly to disengage properly when shutting it off when you're done driving you want to leave them in first gear or reverse don't shut them off in neutral. That's why you get a long beep. It's just like a real manual transmission. You're supposed to leave them in gear when the engine is off. That helps it from rolling. It helps prevent it from rolling. So hopefully you learned some stuff and I know there's gonna be debate and people are gonna disagree with me. Yeah, that's not true about putting in neutral. Dude, anyway, uh, that's gonna do it. So if you guys would like to support the channel, please like, share, and subscribe. And of course you can go visit normalguysupercar.com. There you can buy parts and services for you supercar. So you guys are amazing. We have a lot more car stuff coming your way. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned. It's gonna be sweet.